There is nothing wrong with protesters walking to JKIA offices, the JKIA precincts. Protected areas are out of bounds. We do not have anything that bars an individual from picketing, demonstrating and presenting public petitions in any area. The Kenyan constitution grants the right to assemble and express views through protest. However, police and other government and security officials are apparently allowed to place certain restrictions on the constitutional rights. The service has upheld with utmost respect the rights of all the people, peaceably and unarmed to assemble, demonstrate, picket, and present petitions to public authorities as guaranteed by Article 37 of the Constitution. As Kenyan youth plan to continue taking to the streets and plan to occupy the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, we had a chat with lawyer and scholar Kennedy Echessa to understand the legal perspective of such actions and its consequences. You know when we are being told that the areas are restricted areas under the Act, who are restricted from going there? The general public, specific public, we do not have anything that bars an individual from picketing, demonstrating and presenting public petitions in any area provided. The test in whatever protest, the test is that you must be peaceful, you must be unarmed and you must protect property. That is the only constitutional test that has been put on the protesters. These are the things that these areas are restricted. That is theoretical and it is theoretically illegal. Is it illegal now to have protests in the areas, because it's still in the constitution, um, is it illegal for protesters to occupy some areas designated as per now as restricted areas, critical infrastructure or protected areas? And what are the do's and don'ts and consequences of that? But be it the government that we know, what happens is that if you then access the so-called restricted area, what the police ought to do is to arrest you and charge you under the restricted areas, act on the public order, act the violation of those acts. The service reiterates that protected areas are out of bounds. To unauthorized persons as indicated in the Protected Areas Act, Cap 204, Laws of Kenya. Once you have been charged with those acts, your lawyer should then argue that you have been charged under laws that are unconstitutional, ab initio, and then you get an acquittal. Yeah. So there are no proper consequences for trespassing right now? The proper consequences for trespassing, the very worst that can happen is that the police will arrest you and they ought to arraign you within 24 hours before a court of competent jurisdiction and you are tried. In a person who breaks the law will be dealt with swiftly, firmly and decisively in accordance with the law. And the first call of recourse for any constitutional lawyer is to challenge the legality of those charges. You cannot prevent the citizenry from accessing specific areas. Remember the first article of the constitution is sovereign power belongs to the people. All unauthorized persons are hereby warned not to trespass protected areas. The Kenya Civil, uh, the Kenya Civil Aviation Act, number 21 of 2013, under section 58, provides that any person who trespasses on any land forming part of the government aerodrome or an aerodrome licensed under the regulations made under the Act commits an offence that is punishable by the law. Even for your own security as protesters, I don't see the possibility of you people going to the JKIA where planes are landing and trying to sleep there when you know that a plane may land at any time. 
that alone is endangering your lives. But there is nothing wrong with protesters walking to JKIA offices, the JKIA precincts, without interfering with the normal operations of the airport to protest. It only becomes wrong when you interfere with the general operations of JKIA or general operations of the court. You can come to these courts and protest if you think that the magistrates and the lawyers are not doing adequately what they are called to do. You can protest, but you may not go and force a magistrate and an advocate and litigants out of court and interfere with the functioning of the court. Provided that in the protests you are peaceful, you are not armed, you are not destroying property, you are not interfering with the general running of JKIA such protests remain lawful. So, what really does the law say about demonstrating and on which areas? In this country, we have an act of parliament called the Judicature Act. And this is an act that gives us the hierarchy of laws and how laws should be given the priority in terms of respect. And at the apex is our constitution. The Constitution of Kenya 2010 is the senior most legal document of reference in this country. Under our constitution, the law provides that every person has a right to demonstrate, picket and present public petitions to any authority. And that is the supreme law of the land. We have another law called uh, the Public Order Act. Public Order Act is an act of parliament, and every law must be understood in context. Any person who breaks the law will be dealt with swiftly, firmly, and decisively in accordance with the law. Public Order Act was actually an act that was conceived with the colonial mentality of restricting demonstrations, of restricting uh, picketing. Before the constitution, the entire Public Order Act ought to be declared unconstitutional because it defeats every purpose, intent and spirit of our constitution, which is largely progressive in our region. Secondly, we have another piece of legislation called the Restricted Areas Act. The Restricted Areas Act outlines areas that the public is restricted from accessing. Again, this is another retrogressive a law that was passed with a colonial mindset that because we were Africans and of a lesser race, we could not access specific regions for the security and peace of the occupants who are largely colonialists. Such area was a state house. Such areas are the police barracks. What in a legal mindset should be restricted is the use of force and the use of extra legal means in accessing these areas. If you are to apply the Public Order Act strictly and the Restricted Areas Act strictly, it will defeat the purpose of the Constitution, which allows every person to present public petitions to any authority, so long as they are unarmed and they are peaceful. Tell me, how do you present your public petition to the president and the head of state who resides at State House if they are restricting State House to the extent that the Public Order Act and the Restricted Area, uh, Areas Act prohibits peaceful and unarmed protesters from accessing critical areas to present either public petition or their public grievances, those are unconstitutional provisions. And remember, every person has a duty to protect the Constitution, protect, uphold, and promote the Constitution. If you succumb to acts of parliament that were enacted with a colonial mindset, you lose the purpose of the constitution. And therefore, to that extent, there is no area in this country constitutionally that has been restricted and that the public cannot access for whatever reasons, provided the tenets of peaceful and unarmed demonstrations are exercised under our constitution. Make sure to keep it right here on Saudi TV and we'll bring you all updates as they happen.